Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to our Lord's house. Our current worship series is called Sent. We see that God sends us out into this world, and today we see that God sends us out as fighters because as he sends us into this world, he is sending us into a war zone, a war zone over our faith. We're going to begin our worship service tonight with the gathering song. God's blessings on your worship tonight. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today we are encouraged by the Father of light, who gives us every good and perfect gift. May he inspire us to think of those things that are true, and long for those things that are good, that we may, by his grace, shine like stars in the universe. We ask this in the name of the risen and ascended Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a 
true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We live now in his peace and rise each new day to serve him. You may be seated for the song of praise. Fight the good fight of the faith. 1 Timothy 6. But you, man of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In the sight of God, who gives life to everything, and of Christ Jesus, 
who, while testifying before Pontius Pilate, made the good confession, I charge you to keep this command without spot or blame until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which God will bring about in his own time. God, the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone is immortal and who lives in unapproachable light, whom no one has seen or can see, to him be honor and might forever. Amen. Jesus warns us that his coming brings division. Division in this world between those who follow him and those who don't. Matthew 10, Jesus said, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you, that person will certainly not lose their reward. This is God's word. Please stand. We confess our Christian faith according to the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for the chief hymn.
God's word for our meditation tonight comes from Exodus chapter 32. Moses turned and went down the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands. They were inscribed on both sides, front and back. The tablets were the work of God. The writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. When Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, There is the sound of war in the camp. Moses replied, It is not the sound of victory. It is not the sound of defeat. It is the sound of singing that I hear. When Moses approached the camp and saw the calf and the dancing, his anger burned, and he threw the tablets out of his hands, breaking them to pieces at the foot of the mountain. And he took the calf the people had made and burned it in the fire. Then he ground it to powder, scattered it on the water, and made the Israelites drink it. He said to Aaron, What did these people do to you that you led them into such great sin? Do not be angry, my lord, Aaron answered. You know how prone these people are to evil. They said to me, Make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. So I told them, Whoever has any gold jewelry, take it off. Then they gave me the gold, and I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. Moses saw that the people were running wild, and that Aaron had let them get out of control and so become a laughingstock to their enemies. So he stood at the entrance to the camp and said, Whoever is for the Lord, come to me. And all the Levites rallied to him. Then he said to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Each man strap a sword to his side. Go back and forth through the camp from one end to the other, each killing his brother and friend and neighbor. The Levites did as Moses commanded, and that day about 3,000 of the people died. Then Moses said, You have been set apart to the Lord today, for you were against your own sons and brothers, and he has blessed you this day. The word of the Lord. When God's Israelite people came up out of Egypt, they knew that war lay ahead of them. They were on their way to the promised land of Canaan, which already had other people living in it. So they knew that war lay ahead of them. But they may never have imagined that this war would come so close to home. They knew they were going to have to fight, but they may never have dreamed that they would be fighting against their own people. But that is what happened there, isn't it? While Moses was up on Mount Sinai receiving the Ten Commandments from God, many of the people turned away from God. They fell into open immorality and open idolatry. And so God sent the faithful ones of his people throughout the camp to kill all of those who had made themselves God's enemies. In this instance, standing with the Lord, fighting for the Lord, meant standing against and fighting against even their own countrymen, even their own friends and neighbors, even their own family members. And while there are a lot of things that are different for us today as God's people, and certainly the way that God wants us to fight for him is much different, much less violent today than it was then. There is something that is still the same, isn't there? That war is not really distant. It's not really with people far away and radically different from us in every respect. That war that God calls us to fight is often with those who are close by us and even close to us. We heard Jesus say, a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. But we don't like that, do we? It's so much easier to think of our enemies as God's people as being people from some different country on the other side of the world. It's so much easier for us to think of our enemies as God's, as God's people, as being people who are just radically different from us in every respect. It's so much easier for us to think of our enemies as God's people 
as being people who, who we can't see anything good in them and that they're just openly hostile and antagonistic to us at every turn. But Jesus draws the boundary lines for us very clearly. And they don't fall where we always might think to put them. Following Jesus does put you at odds with those who do not follow him. Trusting Jesus puts you in opposition to those who have rejected him. And that includes people who are otherwise very much like us and otherwise very close to us. It includes people of our own country and city. It includes friends and neighbors and co-workers. It includes siblings and spouses and children. So don't be surprised. Don't be surprised when you following Jesus or you speaking about Jesus puts you under attack even from someone who, who other than that is quite close to you. If that person has rejected Jesus and made themselves an enemy of God, well then of course that's the way that they're going to treat you as one of his people. Also, at the same time, don't be deceived when you do manage to maintain a good relationship with someone who, who doesn't believe in Jesus. It, it is good if you are able to manage to maintain a cordial relationship with, with someone else, even if they're, they're not a Christian. It, it's good if that relationship is still able to be a blessing to you. It is. But at the same time, don't let the positive aspect of that relationship cloud your thinking on where things stand. There still is a very real difference between you and them. If they don't trust in Jesus, then they are on the other side of this war. Now, they might not think or act as if they're fighting a war, but that is the side that they would fall on. As Christians in an unchristian world, as Christians living among non-Christians, we do very much live in a war zone, and that means we need to be ready for a fight. We need to be prepared to fight. That was what Paul told Timothy in one of our readings before. Fight the good fight of the faith. We fight. But thankfully, we do not fight in the same way that God sent his Old Testament people to fight, right? Right? God does not send us out to fight with swords or any other weapon. The way that God has us fight is, is far different and it's far better. The way that you fight this fight against God's enemies is not with hatred or malice or aggression, but with love. Think of the Lord Jesus himself. You know the love that Jesus has for his enemies. You know the love that Jesus had for us when we were still his enemies. Jesus died for his enemies out of love for them, out of love for us, so that we wouldn't be his enemies anymore, so that we would be his friends. That's how Jesus fights this fight. Jesus fights his enemies by loving them and giving himself for them. And as his people, as former enemies of Jesus, that his love has turned into his friends and turned into his people that's how we fight too. We fight by loving them and by giving of ourselves for them. We're not looking to hurt them or to stick it to them or to put them in their place. We want to do what we can to help them, to serve them, even if that's not how they would treat us. And of course, the, the biggest way that we're looking to help and serve is, is to do what we can to promote them not being enemies anymore them becoming friends in the way that matters most, them being with us on God's side. And that means in love, sharing Jesus with them. The weapon that we fight with in this fight is not like the weapons that the world uses, right? You have the sword of the Spirit, the very Word of God. There is no need to resort to some other worldly kind of force or power to try to impose things on people. 
Just let that word of God fly. Let the word of God do what it does. It has the power to demolish unbelief and break down opposition to Jesus. It can kill and make alive, turning enemies into friends. And that's the kind of victory that we're looking for, right? God's word is the only weapon that delivers that kind of victory. You fight this fight not by taking lives, but by losing your life. Perhaps physically even. As you follow Jesus and speak about Jesus to others who, who do not like him and do not want to hear about him, you could perhaps even lose your life physically. Or perhaps as you speak of Jesus, as you follow him, you may find that you don't physically lose your life, but, but instead you find that you have given up the kind of life that your sinful flesh would want for you to have by giving up those sins, by giving up those pleasures, by giving up comfortability, by giving up feeling like you fit in and belong in this world, by giving up, if it comes to this, even certain relationships. You fight this fight by losing that kind of a life or by losing life altogether. But what you gain is far better. You gain life, real life, eternal life. That's what Jesus promises us today. Whoever loses his life for my sake, for Jesus' sake, will find it. Life, eternal life with him is what Jesus promises us after we go through the war in this world. Not that we're earning this life for ourselves by the way we fight, no. Jesus has already earned this life for us by his death, and he's given it to us by faith. But when you know the peace that Jesus has for you after the war, and when you know that this war has already been won for you by Jesus, and when you know that Jesus, as your captain in this fight, will give you back far more than he has ever asked you to give up for him, then you know that you can keep fighting this good fight of faith and take hold of that life that he's promised you. And you may find, when all is said and done, you may find that you giving up the, the sinful, easy, worldly life that your sinful flesh wants, or if you're called on to do it, giving up life itself, you may find that that is how God continues to win more battles in this world as he turns more enemies into friends. More than a few people have been brought to faith in Jesus after seeing the confident way in which believers surrender their life. Confident of the life that Jesus has promised them after this one. More than a few people have been brought to faith in Jesus after seeing the loving, countercultural way in which believers live according to their faith in this life. Confident of the life that Jesus has promised them after this one. So fight the good fight. The battle is on, but the battle belongs to the Lord. Amen. Please stand. Almighty God, we acknowledge with thanks that all we have and enjoy is a gift from your gracious hand. We come before you today in heartfelt appreciation for our nation and its people. We thank you for enabling us to worship you in freedom and to serve you without fear. You have enriched us with the bounties of farm and factory, the beauty of forest and mountain, and the marvels of medicine and science. For all these blessings, we praise and glorify you. Look with favor upon our nation and preserve our cherished liberties. Enable our leaders to govern with wisdom, honesty, courage, and justice. Protect those who serve in the armed forces and those who maintain peace and safety in our communities. Give us willingness to obey our nation's laws and to work for the common good. Keep our financial institutions secure and our economy strong. Bless our fields that they may produce abundant harvests. Guard us from calamities of nature and accident and spare our land from the ravages of disease and epidemic. Teach us not to worry but to cast all our cares on you. Strengthen the homes of our nation. By your spirit, lead husbands and wives to love each other, 
parents to nurture their children, young adults to assume responsibility, and children to show respect. Lead the citizens of our land to honor the useful foundations of society. Care for those who are sick or have been injured. Calm those who are disappointed and, dis and depressed. Provide guidance to those who care for people in trouble or in need. Lead us to provide help when we can and to pray at all times. To you, O Lord, we bring our thanks and our requests. Hear our prayers for Jesus' sake. Amen. And hear us also as we pray the prayer that he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God. You are the giver of all that is good. Help us love you with all our heart, strengthen us in true faith, provide us with all we need, and keep us safe in your care. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Therefore, with all the saints in, on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Come, for all things are now ready. Please stand. We give thanks, mighty God, that you have refreshed us with this holy supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Now may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you today and always. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn.
Once again, a good evening to everyone. Great to worship with you tonight. Join us next week as we finish our series, Sent. Next week we will see that as God sends us out, God does not leave us or abandon us. God actually goes with us as he sends us out. Um, I'll turn it over to, to Jeremy. Hey, good evening. So uh, tonight's the night where we pick the siding colors. So there's a couple of us that need about at least 15 minutes to set up because we're going to invite people that are maybe uh, outside enjoying the weather and coming this Sunday. So there's a Zoom session that we'll set up as well to invite those that could make a tent tonight. Um, we're playing Kahoot. So those that have played Kahoot and are staying, please help those that haven't. Um, and I'd ask lastly, please come forward because everything's going to be on the screen so you can see it. So come forward after you've enjoyed some refreshments and coffee, water, all that. So uh, please watch for yourselves out. Thank you.